Niagara Falls, bud. All right, we're back on the 455G project. If you guys have not seen, there's several videos of us working on this thing, dragging it out of the weeds, getting all the junk out of it, getting it going, running transmission problems, all kinds of good stuff, didn't we, Kevin? Just wasting a bunch of money. Wasting Kevin a lot of money. Kevin can't eat no more. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought some cinnamon rolls, so I've been eating them. Last video was us putting all this undercarriage stuff on. We took the track frames off and flipped them over and had a good old time, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So. We're about got this dude all knocked out. We just finished flushing out the coolant system. It's got all new fluids in it. Um, it's, it's got it's still a leaker a little bit. She's a leaker. We got all the body panels. We did not take these off. The previous owner took them all off trying to work on it. So it's gonna be like Jenga, but I'm sure we can figure it out putting all the panels back on. We got a couple cylinders leaking, one up there. We noticed this one started gushing out. You guys can see oil running down. Unfortunately, I don't like rebuilding cylinders on Friday. What about you? No. 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 We'll, we'll wait to the end of the day. There's one more thing I'm wanting to build too. There's a return to dig arm that's missing off there. I got a couple magnets. I'll show you guys how that stuff works later. But we're going to get her pulled in the shop. What do you think? Go ahead and stick the panels on it. Yep. Make it look a little prettier before we start tackling this other stuff. All right, let's get after it. Let's do it. Kevin's got the nose. We're going to stick it on there and keep stacking parts on from there. Are you on the outside over there or the inside? Go down a little bit, Kevin. Whoop. How about a little more damage? Oh, I may have got that one. Hey, I got all mine started, so that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. You're screwed over there. Yeah, well, yeah. How's that going for you? Yeah. You need some big long ones pulled in, don't you? I got you right here, maybe. You like how I got my side in first? Yeah, I appreciate that. That's what you get for running forklift. Okay. Somewhere in there. Right there. About that one. Come on, it's got to go in, bud. Okay, get this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll oh, give you the yeah, cranker tool here. Oh, don't worry, I got this one in for you. Did you get her started? Don't worry, I did your job. Okay, here we go. matter to you. <laughs> now it's starting to look better. Huh? Alright, we got the hard nose on. We're going to get ready and stick the hood in. Get ready to come over here and get about $200 worth of hardware. This is what I do on Fridays. You just put this up here and just look back and forth. And stick, it, stick it in your pockets. Get a little bit of this. Put, put some American parts in there. Oh, boss is looking. You just look away. This is some more. <laughs> How's your pockets doing down there? Get a little heavy. There you go. 
And the hood's covered up in all kinds of parts. I'm gonna set you guys up over in time lapse. We're gonna bolt all this stuff back on here. Then we'll get to some more important stuff. All right, Mr. Kevin got all the panels on, looking good. We got one missing part we didn't get. Oh, Gabe lost her exhaust Gabe pipe. Well. And guess what? We got one in stock. Bye. I did see the clamp over here. That's the only thing we're missing. We're doing good, right? Okay. We're gonna get that stuck on there. What are we doing next? We got the belly pans on. Starting to look Nothing. a lot. Tried it. Starting to look a lot better. We're hoping those two cylinders are leaking. We'll fix ourselves. I've never had a cylinder fix itself yet. It'll work its way into it. Don't you need a wiggle, wiggle jiggle there, bud. Give her time. Keep trucking. I mean, it could go more, but... <laughs> Yeah, she's starting to look better. You got the guards on under here for the four on bucket cylinders. Um, I gotta get that uh, return to dig bracket made. Thinking about popping this cylinder out, maybe rebuilding it up here in the air. I'm not sure yet, and we got a four in one cylinder up there. So, but other than that, she's about to get wrapped up here. So, all right. So this is the mechanism here that. Uh, does the return to dig basically when you dump your bucket there is a detent in that lever it actually will when you curl it back it actually will stay stuck in that when it comes back there's actually a uh, magnet i've got a couple new ones coming when it comes back up and makes contact with the switch it will kick that lever out making the bucket set level or however you adjust it this is also a manual indicator when the rod comes up here it tells you uh when your bucket's level too so there's actually a bracket that goes on right here and a rod that comes up. Um, I shot a little clip, of, we've got a 555G at the homestead that we had several years. I shot a little clip of it, showing you guys what it looks like and I'll throw it in here. All right, so I'm in uh, actually our equipment shed here. This is actually a 555G we had. It's only got like 900,000 original hours on it. We got a winch on the back, but anyway, it's just the next size bigger machine. So this is right here is what we got to build. This is obsolete at John Deere, they tell me. So um, here's our magnet in here on this rod. So I've just got to mimic this. Doesn't have to look exactly like this. So just getting a couple pictures of this dude so we can uh, kind of get an eye of what we need to build there. But uh, that's what it looks like. Nothing too fancy. So we'll see what we can do here. So we're gonna try to fabricate something like this. This thing's been a little bit. That switch is broken. Like I said, I got a new one coming. I'm gonna do some master fabrication skills here. That new switch should come with a new harness here. It better, cause you're cutting it, ain't you? <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna pull that. So I think we gotta get this thing straightened up. Probably do a, maybe turn a piece out in the lathe and slit it in half here, Kevin, or something. Then we'll do Something like that, right? Hey, you got grease all over your face. I wonder why. Your people are gonna hate you. I wonder why. They're gonna feel sorry for you. Well, I can't pay for running water anymore. 
can't pay for running water. That's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get a game plan here and figure this situation out. All right, I found this piece of, uh, what do you call this? Metal? So what we're gonna do, or Kevin's gonna- A donut. A donut. Kevin's gonna bore this out. This is a 50 millimeter rod, just a shy wee bit under two inches. We're gonna bore that out here. Then I'm gonna put a couple tabs on the side. I'm gonna cut those out in the plasma cutter. We'll weld those on where bolts will go through. Then we'll cut this thing in half. Just like, are you making fun of me? No, I was picking my nose. We'll cut that thing in half. <laughs> And we'll make a clamp, then we'll get some kind of arm rigged up there, some re rebar or something, right? Rebar. <laughs> rebar for arm. Punch stock. Punch stock, there Multiple you go. Full adjustments. Oh, garage door track. Yeah. That sounds good. All right, we got some right there. We'll just cut some extra off up there. That won't flop around or nothing, will it? I got some little ears cut on the plasma table. Kevin's over here doing some lathe work. So he drilled that center section out. And now he's um, boring it out to 50 millimeters. Isn't that right? Okay. Uh -huh. That sounded good. Yeah. The camera over here, you can get some oil feed going. Oil smoke? Right in your oil face. Splatter, <laughs> oh, you got it on you. It keeps linking it. Look. <laughs> Too much oil. All right, go get that done. We'll chop her in half. We'll weld these on. Something like that. We'll go make his arm. All right, well, Kevin's over there boring that out. Actually, got uh, new parts from John Deere. This is an electromagnet. It sits up in here. You can kind of see the old one it got tore up. I was going to show you guys how this works. So, that piece sits up there. Then this is actually the magnet. You guys can see it says off and on. So when that thing slides by there, right there where it hits on, it's gonna click and tell that lever to kick back in neutral. So I'm gonna set you guys up here. I'm gonna plug this in. Keep in mind we've got this harness uh, unplugged here. We're gonna plug this switch in one-handed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start this machine up and put that bucket in that detent position um, where it's coming back to that return to dig and wherever i slide this magnet back here it should shut it off so we'll go ahead and fire this thing up pick the bucket up we dumped it right there i'm gonna push this lever over and it should stay stuck in detent See that there, the bucket's coming around. We kicked it right off here with the magnet. Everything stopped, so we'll try it again there. Lever stuck in. We'll slide this across there. We kicked her out. Hopefully you guys can see what was going on there, but uh, tells me the electrical system's working. So that wires actually come back here into the spool valve underneath there and there's a little magnet in there too, it's working. So that's good news, we don't have to mess with that. All we gotta do is rig our bracket up here. I'm gonna set this back down on the ground. So this is what they call return to dig. The bucket's kind of sitting flat. Maybe even turn down just a little bit so it'll start digging. Every operator sets them up different. So that arm we're building, you guys can kind of see this dirt mark. That's how far that goes back. So arm's got to clamp on here. And it's got to come up and go this way because the end of it needs to be right here where we're at at the return to dig. So that uh, arm will have this magnet on here. So when it's coming back here, it slides back up. It's going to kick that thing out. So did you get her, bud? I need an official measurement. 50 millimeters. 
Or a little bit less than two inches. <laughs> Don't mean nothing to me. I'm an American. I was showing them how our thing actually works here. It's kicking her out like it should. Say what? Magic trick. Things work? It does work. Uh, I didn't catch wire either. We don't have to do any wiring. Yeah, you put that in thing, slide it across there, and she kicks out. So Kevin's getting super duper precise measurements. I'm gonna get this thing loosened up, straightened up, and we'll get a cardboard tent plate going on for that arm. All right, Kevin's getting ready to cut his piece in half. I got the new switch bolted in there. I got this straightened up. I got this super sweet tent plate I made. You guys kind of get the idea i'm gonna straighten this up a little bit cut it out of a piece of the steel hopefully it works if it doesn't then we'll regroup got to put some slots in it for this magnet down here too so we got some adjustment on that so we'll get that cut out and see what happens here what you got going on here bud <laughs> is this the welding table it is today you need me to hold something no no kevin's cut that in half he's gonna weld those two ears on I come up with this after our cardboard template. It's going to go on here somewhere. How's that little magnet up there? It should bolt in like so. Get a couple bolts. We'll get that all welded up and show you what we got going on. You do good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. I just dropped my magnet. Kevin's got a super awesome clamp you do there. What do you call that? So, I'm thinking something like that neighborhood. What are you thinking? I love it. Clamp in there, and we got to check for uh, clearance when she rolls back and forth. Oh, clearance. I was uh, wrapping this wire up. I need to tape some wires up here. Make everything nice and pretty and nice and new. Then we'll get that zip tied all up. See if we can't get that clamped on there and make sure she works. We'll get that tacked on and it will look factory. Where's my lock nuts? Oh, these nuts? I got them. Right here, bud. Underneath all these high dollar Lawson zip ties. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, we're going to get that bolted on there and uh, see what we got. So you guys see me earlier. I had to return to dig working when we plugged it in there somewhere in this old harness It's not looking real great. We got some bad wires. So what we're gonna do is actually just replace this whole uh, harness and uh, we got some new used ends off some other John Deere harnesses whenever you uh, Have a bad harness. We always cut the ends off of them. You never know when you need an end, isn't that right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Times like these we can repurpose this end and reuse it like we did here. This was one of the cutoff ones, so still a good end and everything. We'll just splice some wires, make us a new harness from point A to point B there. And then hopefully it'll work. Kevin got this all welded up, looking pretty. Got her magnet on there, which is a oh my magnet stuck on here. <laughs> got her magnet on there is adjustable, that's adjustable. So we'll get this all wired up. Hopefully it starts working here in a few minutes. All right, so it's actually Monday now. We've been messing this thing on Friday. I got tied up with some customers. Kevin got replaced by a hunter. So we've been messing and messing with this thing. We put a new wiring harness in here. I showed you guys this thing was working. It's been erratic, so I got to thinking this magnet, I got another magnet from John Deere with week and the original magnet wouldn't hardly stick anything it didn't have any uh, magnetism to it so 
went to John Deere and got another magnet. This one's a little bit stronger than the other one. You can tell a difference. The other one wouldn't even stick on the side of the machine. Um, this one actually sticks. And we got the thing off here and it's actually tripping right now. So we're going to bolt it all back up. And hopefully this new magnet fixes our problem. I hate getting brand new parts that don't work. We'll get this bolted up and we'll see if the return to dig works. Uh, about a quarter. I don't know what's going on with these magnets from John Deere. Or if this switch is not strong enough. I don't know. But I can take a... Uh, yeah, it should be good, Hunter. That's good. I can take a magnetic camera mount like I use on my camera. Stick on here. It's got a little bit more magnetism to it. And this thing's going to work just fine. We'll pick this bucket up and dump it and I'll show you. Put her in a dump position. We'll put that over. Watch when it comes out. Kick it out automatically. Isn't that crazy? Well, I don't know what's going on. What? John Deere magnet parts. I have no idea. All I know is this one makes it work. So we're going to figure a way up to uh, mount this uh, magnet up on here somehow. So I'm tired of messing this thing. I don't know if these magnets they got are not strong enough. It's funny. This one was a little bit stronger than the other one. The other one wouldn't even stick on the side of a car. This one would. I thought, well, maybe it's enough to make it work, but apparently not now if you get it real close to it the book says it's supposed to have a 3 8 gap so plus or minus eight and i've changed it well swapped it around and moved it and you know what's wrong with it not good. anyway we're done jacking with it we're going to get this mounted up get her all set with the bucket setting level and then we'll uh take out these leaky cylinders what do you think yep all right after much trial and error we finally got this thing working Got everything set and adjusted. Got the bucket sitting in a, what I call the return to dig position. Got the heel of the bucket up just a little bit and the teeth are pointed down just a little to dig. Of course you can adjust that here with this slot we got. That's actually my camera magnet. I had to get another magnet for my camera. You notice this here, this is actually like a manual indicator. So when this is flush with this rod here, you know your bucket's level. So if that stuff goes bad, you've still actually got an indicator to know where your bucket's at. So got the new wiring harness and made all zip tied back up the hoses. You ready to try it one last time, Hunter, to make sure she works? Yep. He's going to raise that bucket up and dump it. Go on up. Now dump it. Alright, I put the lever over in detent. See he's got his hand off of it. That magnet slides up there, she should kick off. Now put your bucket down. Everything's right. It should be ready to dig. There you go. Perfect. Shut her off. So a little fun fact. Uh, actually, <laughs> I had another extra magnet laying around. I decided to weld a bolt on it. Whenever you do that, it actually demagnetizes the magnet. So a little fun fact. I'm sure a lot of people knew that, but now we know. I was just telling about my fun fact. Fun fact don't no don't fun weld magnet. don't weld on the back side of a magnet shell. So it no longer magnetize it works, so we got that fixed up. Gray rebuild some cylinders? I think so. We'll start with this dude here. We got a big leak down here. It leaked out over the floor over the weekend, so we'll start with the little one first and work our way back. Alright, I got another little fun fact for you. You guys have not uh, seen these kind of cylinders. These actually have a spanner nut around the outside that goes on this head gland here. And usually the first thing you do is unhook your hoses on your cylinders and start taking stuff loose. It's actually the last thing you want to do on this style. The reason is sometimes when you knock this nut loose, it will want to spin that whole head gland and stuff in there. So one way you can stop from doing that is actually applying hydraulic pressure on the back side of that head gland. Have somebody hold pressure on it while you bust that loose. A lot of times those things will spin you can kind of see it better here but there's two pieces in there but this is just has a snap ring inside this barrel and it will actually spin if they're locked together so we're going to cheat on this one I'll hold that hunter yeah, gotcha. it's kind of hard to get a spanner wrench in there a lot of times we can 
we'll do this here with the dull air hammer. I won't tell nobody about it. Alright, so we know that one's going to break loose, so we'll go ahead and take the lines and stuff loose now, but sometimes, like I say, those will spin and you have to hold pressure on them. So. Alright, Hunter's going to go ahead and spin this nut off here. Go ahead, Hunter. Take this nut off. So this type of cylinder is used on uh, a lot of John Deere stuff in the 80s up to the early 2000s. So. Now hold that up here. So what you're going to do, you're going to want to hammer that um, head going down. This way. Yep. You're using brass, you don't tear nothing up. Moving. So there's a snap ring down in there. He's got to drive that down far enough so we can get that snap ring out. All right, Hunter got that drove down. You go ahead and pop that snap ring out there, Hunter. That's all there is to it. So now. This whole thing will pull up out of here. We'll probably get the forklift and tie a chain onto it and pull her out. That snap ring was just retaining that uh, head gland in there. We'll put a chain around her, lift her up, and pop her out of there. We got the rod out in the vise. Hunter's gonna bust the nut off. You guys can see the seals are trashed in this thing. Old and rotten. Pull it off. The whole thing? Yep. Didn't feel like there's much in there for seals. Yeah, they're pretty much uh, deteriorated and gone. So we got a couple packing kits here. I'm gonna throw some new seals in it and we'll get her back together. You guys have seen me rebuild these quite a few times, so we'll get her all fixed up like brand new. All right, Hunter's been heating up this piston seal here, so it's uh, been heating it up in some hot water. Maybe. Maybe. So we can get it pushed on here, swelled out. Get it in its new home here. There we go. We've got a backup ring going on here. There's one piston all rebuilt. So that's what seals the oil up on both sides when you, on the, you move the lever, it shoots oil on this side or this side, that's a seal, it actually seals it up. That's a wear band there, it just keeps from rubbing the cylinder, so. That one. Got this one all, Hunter bead blasted this one. Packing kit. You're gonna need a little fancy tools in that drawer over there. Maybe the smaller one that's open over by the grinder. Again, it's another rod seal. It's got a backup O ring. This thing's different. Pull that into M shape so I can get those in there. Okay. 
another seal there. The oil always pushes on the back side of the seal and flares that out. Mm -hmm. So we know the oil comes in from the back side, so pull this into M shape like that. Put it in its little home. So that oil is going to come on that lip there and push on that and swell it out and make it tighter. And this is just another wear band. Smart people would have put this in before the wiper seal. Backup ring, and a, that's what they call a backup ring. That's the wrong size, isn't it? How about this size? That looks a little better, don't it? Yeah. These kits are made for more than one thing. That backup ring's got a kind of a round spot in it. It mm. goes against the O-ring that side. The O-rings <laughs> always go towards the oil. So oil is on this side, right? Mm -hmm. So you got your O-ring towards that, and then your backup ring here. We'll stick the backup ring on first with the groove going down. I got the groove facing this way. At the o-ring towards the oil side mm -hmm. all brand new ready to go put a little grease on her and slide her on there go ahead a little bit more So it don't go no more. Stack. Close it. I go the right way, it helps. Keep going. A little bit more. You got her. I didn't want a sock to spray. All right, we'll put a little bit of grease on this, and then we need to go clean that barrel out, get it all polished up. So we'll take this these new seals without cutting them. Okay. All right, so you always want to make sure the top of your barrel is polished up here clean. We're going to get a little sandpaper, emery cloth, clean that up a little bit. Knock those burrs down before we drop that uh, new rod back in that cylinder. If you don't do that, it's just going to scuff up all your new seals. So. Snapping back in there. Yep. Now I'm gonna lift this up. I'll 
Hey, calm down there, little T. I honestly do not like working with you. <laughs> you sense a hostility here, Kevin? I don't bring my love. Okay. Got the 4 in 1 bucket rebuilt. We're getting ready to break open Niagara Falls over here. It is a gusher. We got the nut busted loose. Hunter's going to take that bolt out. We'll drive that pin down. Hopefully, lower that cylinder down enough and get that rod out of there without any carnage. So. Total carnage. Just that easy. Got it. That was uneventful. Yeah. Really? Just that easy. I didn't see nothing. We'll get that cleaned up. You get your mess cleaned up there, bud? You got it on your hand. While you're messing with that, me and Hunter rebuilt this. Rob, you got new seals on there. What did you do? I don't remember. You're over eating pretzels, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to get this thing slammed back together in there. And Kevin's been working on getting some grease fittings to take grease. We'll be about done with this project. Come on in and down. Oh, whoa, Randy. Come on in, come on in. on that and I'll hit this in a little bit. Okay. Booyah! Now you can go back. Yep, 
yep, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, hit a fit. All right, got that cylinder back together. Hunter's tightened up the bolt. Mr. Kevin's greasing stuff up. Got, got some grease fittings, not taking grease, bud. What do you got going on here? Hunter, I found another bolt for you. Custom. Custom. That's about a wrap on this thing, ain't it? Huh? Well, part one. Part, what is this, part 800? Yeah. Next part, we've got secret, top secret mission for it planned gonna be going in the dirt you guys want to see that you're gonna have to stay tuned it's a super awesome place super awesome place we gotta do a little dig out on crawl space so you guys want to see this machine in action definitely uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out if you like the video what do you do give a thumbs up big thumbs up smash it bub. smash it smash the thumbs up definitely comment below especially on them john deere parts up there i don't know what's going on there so something something's going on i love new john deere parts that don't work anyway guys we got uh, another video or two coming out in this thing hope you guys liked it if you do leave some comments below we'll catch you next time